This is Szeslitz in northern Bavaria. Five months ago, I was on that motorway down there and I did a film which was called Is Szeslitz Worth Visiting? I did it at a motorway stop which was just before Szeslitz and the decision I took then was, well, if the weather's okay, I'll come here. But it wasn't. Hello and welcome to today, the 31st of January 2018. I'm in the van and I've got a problem, so I thought I'd share the problem with you. And it's this. I was had a great day out yesterday, wonderful sunny weather. It was cold, but I'm not. that doesn't bother me when there's the sunshine. Today it's slightly warmer, but it's raining. And now, last night, I came to this uh, service point on the motorway. It is to the east of Bamberg, and it is called Gleichberg Blick. Uh, Gleichberg uh, is a uh, mount mountain of sorts. It's got uh, it's got castle on the top. And um, anyway, I just came here because I, I like the sound of the name. I admit that. I often do that. Um, I'll just stop somewhere because I like the sound of the name. But now, uh, there's a place nearby, it is from here, six and a half kilometres, it's called uh, Szeslitz, and uh, the question is, should I visit it or not? Now, what I have done is I have a guidebook from the year 1912 called Bangberg und das Frankenland, which is written by one Dr. Dietrich Amende. Now, there was a Nazi doctor, Dietrich Amende, who wrote in 1937 that something along the words uh, that Hitler was the greatest physician or something daft like that. I mean, obviously, that's just the sort of thing you expect from a hypochondriac. But other than that, this Dr. Dietrich Amende, who may not be the same one and probably wasn't because he wrote this book 25 years earlier, if it was him. And uh, the area around here is called Frankenland. Um, it's, it's noted for its uh, the hilly country, um, when I say hilly, I mean it's about 500 metres uh, in height, but it, it, you can see when you sort of walk around, it's a bit on the hilly side. Now, uh, I've got his description from the book, which was uh, written in 1912, and, and now, uh, so this is what he's got to say about uh, 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 Szeslitz, which is originally a Slavic settlement. It, it um, was first mentioned in 1800. Uh, sorry, 805, and it was a small town in 1062. Today, that's to say 1912, the picturesque small town with its admirable inns is a popular outing destination for people from Bamberg, Nuremberg and Coburg. Now, if somebody's coming from Nuremberg in 1912 on a day trip, uh, you know what I mean, they expect something pretty good, really. Anyway, so he goes on to say what, what's pretty good, which are worth seeing are the parish church, a gothic hall church with interesting gravestones from 1360, 1569 and 1570, hospital church built in 1780 and an, an additional building uh, to that built in 1739 to 1774 in, who, in the gable of which is a lovely relief by the Bamberg sculptor Golvitzer, the Dillitscher house with uh, fine wood carvings from 1612 and in the graveyard there's an exceptionally beautiful statue of the Holy Virgin from 1450 which comes from St. Martin's Church in Bamberg. <clears throat> Actually when I think about it that doesn't sound all that good. <laughs> but, um, um, now the uh, I'm sure that the, ta the, the town's very nice uh, to, to look at. The problem is this it's raining and it's a bit cold. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to take you outside, we're going to have a look at the weather, and you write in the comments below what I should have done, and then I'll tell you later what I did, because at this very moment, I don't know what I'm going to do. Oh, another good thing about this town is it's got a free air, stale plats, for motorhomes. I think they take four there, no facilities, no electricity, no water, don't know nothing, but you can. it, it, it is marked out for motorhomes. So there's another good reason to... Uh, go there. So what we're going to do now is um, we're going to have a look outside at the weather then we're going to make a decision. So this is the weather outside. Now the Geichberg has this uh, castle at the top of it which goes back I think to Neolithic times or something like that and it, it wasn't well 
protected because uh, when gunpowder came in it was abandoned but it's been sort of done up again in recent times I think it was 1971 or something like that and in this area where I am now of uh, this barbarian uh, Franken uh, Switzerland the highest I think it's 577 off the top of my head anyway that's what the weather is like. Is this worth going to see a magnificent uh, statue of the Holy Mary in some graveyard from 1450? Or shall I uh, just uh, make my way Oops, back? I'm just trod in the mud. Hope it was the mud, not some, something, a message a dog just left. The day I made that film it was in the evening and I just had an absolutely fantastic day out lovely winter weather brilliant sunshine and not too cold that's unusual and uh, so I thought but well, it was raining the following day I thought well I'm not going to get wet today I'm getting wet and I'm in Cheslitz now right well have a look at that to start off with 12th of October 1874 and it was put up on the 12th of October 1876 right so it took me two years to do it now in the 19th century Cheslitz was noted uh, as a sort of a tourist destination. People would actually come here to visit some of the sites that I mentioned in that film at the time. And what I'll do now is we'll have a very quick look around the town because it is there's a bit of rain in the air. I should have parked close at the centre. When you've got the van, it's difficult to find a spot. And there's a couple of places I went past. And I thought if I hadn't had a queue of cars behind me, I'd have made a better effort to park the van. Church of St. Killian dates back in its original form to the middle of the 11th century. That was the first one, so there's much left of them. That would have been a wooden church, no doubt. Yeah. 
parts of the bit at the back are from the 14th and 16th centuries. Those that died in the First World War. First one, 26th of August 1914. Last to die, 18th of October 1918. Good location, so he died in uh, Wurzburg. It's probably a military hospital. Some names there, Bapong, noted for 17th of October 1914, later noted for the Battle of the Somme two years later. Nearly all of them seem to have died in the West. Feld Lazaret 12. Joseph Shona, 22nd of January 1918. Victims of Hitler. Thank you. 